Good morning and welcome to the Killick and Co Market Update. Today is the seven year anniversary of the Brexit referendum, which took place on the 23rd of June 2016. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how sterling has performed against the euro since then. Here's a 20 year chart. You can see that sterling dropped in the financial crisis years as the UK fell into recession. It picked up over the following few years as the UK economy recovered more quickly than the European economy, but sterling dropped again around the time of the referendum and it hasn't really recovered since then. We can also look at the value of trade with the EU. Imports are shown in pink and exports are shown in green, and that grey dashed line shows the difference. We import more than we export from the EU, which is bad news when the pound is weak. The end of that Brexit transition period coincided with COVID, so at the moment it's actually quite difficult to separate the impact of COVID on trade from the impact of Brexit, but this is something that will be analysed very closely over the coming few years. And here in the UK this week, we've had the latest inflation data and another interest rate decision from the Bank of England, both of which can be described as disappointing. We had been hoping for a fall in inflation, but the data for May showed that the rate was 8.7%, exactly the same as it had been in April. This is a real contrast to what's been happening in the US, where inflation has been falling steadily and it's now down to about 4%. On this chart here, we're comparing the headline rates of inflation in the UK, shown by the pink line, and the US, shown by the green line, over the last 10 years. You can see the rates have tracked each other fairly closely for most of this time period, but they've really diverged since last year. And this is partly because the UK was a bit slower to start putting interest rates up in order to get that inflation under control, but it's also because the UK is much less self-sufficient in terms of food and energy. We depend on imports, as you can see by that European trade chart that we showed in the first section, and these are more costly when the pound is weaker. We can also look at the breakdown of different categories within that CPI figure to see where exactly these price rises are coming from. Here you can see that food is still at the top of the list with annual inflation of over 18%. The green bars show the annual data that was published in May and the pink bars show the annual data from April. The good news is that there has been a small decline in food price inflation since then. And finally this week, we've had the Paris Air Show with various airlines placing orders for new airplanes. At this show, we've had a record order for new airplanes with an Indian airline placing an order for 500 new Airbus planes. Here's the Airbus share price. And you can see that plunge in COVID times when travel was prevented, but the share price has steadily recovered and is now almost back to its 2019 level. While many consumers have been cutting back in some areas due to the cost of living crisis, demand for travel has remained high despite big increases in airfares, and the strong orders we're seeing at the Paris Air Show suggests that many travel companies are expecting the strong demand for travel to continue. Moving on to have a look at next week, it's looking fairly quiet on our corporate calendar, but we are expecting results out from Nike. That's it from us. Enjoy the weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.